If you're thinking about a case for the latest 3000 series GPU, or maybe you're planning a new PC build or a PC upgrade, then be sure to watch this video. G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean, and I know a lot of you out there are planning new PC builds and PC upgrades now that the new Nvidia cards have been released. Let me know what you're planning. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments. But today, if you're looking for a new case, I have one behind me that you might wanna consider for that build. It is the CL500 from Deepcool. This is a mid-tower high airflow case. Today I'm gonna be taking you through the specifications and features, and also showing you how to install your parts into it. So before we get into the build and and I guess going through all the features and specifications, let me just talk to you quickly about the parts that we're using in this build, which is actually my own personal PC. For the power supply, we've got a Deepcool DQ850-M-V2L. I think that's the model of power supply. It's an 850 watt modular power supply from Deepcool. The CPU cooler is a Deepcool Castle 360 all-in-one liquid cooler. The motherboard is an ASUS X570 ATX motherboard with a Ryzen 5 2600 CPU. Definitely gonna be upgrading to the new Ryzen chips when they come out. For memory, we've got 32 gigs of G-School uh, Triton Z RGB memory. The graphics card is a Strix 2070 Super. We've got a couple uh, NVMe drives in there as well. And then we've got a bunch of fans from Deep called the MF120 GT. Okay, so before we get into the install, let's just go through some of the features and specifications of this CL500 case from Deepcool. The dimensions of this case, so you're looking at 473 millimeters in length, 226 millimeters in total width, and then 519 millimeters in height. In terms of all the side panels, so they're held on by magnets. You've got a glass side panel on one side, which just pops off, and then a rear side panel made of uh, metal that you can also just remove, and they're just held on with magnets. Now, for the top and the front panels, they are just held on with little plastic clips. So the front one, you just pull off. Um, the top one, though, actually has a little button that you can press that will help you sort of pop the hood. So if you want to get access to clean those fans or clean your radiator, that you might have up there, you can easily do that. So everything in this case, in terms of getting rid of those panels, it's all completely toolless. Now for the radiator support at the front, you can do a 360 mil rad or a 280 mil rad, um, or in the top, you can do a 240 mil rad as well. So depending on what liquid cooler that you have already or planning on getting, um, this case will support all of those different radiator options. Now for the GPU, you can actually put anything up to 330 millimeters in total length. So even something like a 3080, or a 3090 will fit inside of this case, no problems at all. You'll still have plenty of room for our airflow to keep those components nice and cool. Um, and something else that's really cool is the fact that you have a little arm that comes out from the inside of the case on the motherboard tray to prevent your GPU from sagging a little bit, which actually is something I'm utilizing on my card, the 2070 Super from ASUS, which is quite a big and heavy card. So that little bracket that comes included is definitely a welcome. The motherboard support is anything up to an ATX size motherboard. You just can't go anything bigger than that. On the back side of the case, you've got room for two two and a half inch hard drives or two two and a half inch SSDs. Um, you've got a drive cage there as well, so you can put two three and a half inch hard drives. You've also got included a four fan PWM fan hub, so that's really great. So the purpose of that, so you can connect your four fans into the fan hub and then from that fan hub, run that into your motherboard's fan header. So you can control all four of those fans through your motherboard software or through your motherboard's BIOS, which is really, really great. The actual rubber grommets on the motherboard tray are quite handy as well in terms of cable management and making sure that you're not snagging or anything. It makes everything look nice and clean as well. And then in terms of cable management on that rear tray, you've got 23 millimeters of room to play with to sort of route all your cables and Velcro tie them and zip tie them and do everything that you need to do to make it nice and tidy. So that's everything for the rear side of the case. That's the features and specifications of this case. Now let's get into the build. So let's talk about the CPU cooler for a second that I'm using in this build. This is the Castle 360 with the MF120 GT fans, which don't come included. They are an optional thing that I decided to use instead of the ones that come on it. But I've got six of those fans in a push-pull configuration. So pushing air through from the outside and then pulling it through on the inside, which with this case was an absolute dream. Everything fit, no problems. With this 360 mil rad at the front as well, it didn't really give me any issues in terms of clearance or bumping into the graphics card. 
or anything like that. In terms of temperatures, the Ryzen 5 2600 never got above 55 degrees and that is with a slight overclock on the CPU. But overall, been using this cooler now for at least six months or maybe more and I've actually never had an issue with it. Even in the hot months in, the, in Australian summer that we have here, it never fails me. It always is working absolutely no problem. But even if it did, it does have this anti-leak technology so that way, even if it does get really hot or if something malfunctions, I don't have the risk or worry about any of that liquid getting into my computer. So that's really nice. So now let's talk about the installation process for this CPU cooler. If you've got an Intel based system, it will be pretty similar. Just check the manual and just, you know, modify a few steps at the beginning as the guide that I'm going to be sort of giving you guys is for an AMD based system. So the first thing is to make sure that you're doing this outside of the case. So put your motherboard down on a flat surface as well as the cooler, maybe have that to the side with all the tools and screws that you need. Then on the motherboard, you need to remove those little retention brackets that are either side of the CPU socket and uh, keep them because you might need them later on if you wanna you know, RMA to your motherboard, but they need to come off. From there, you wanna get the back plate that comes included with the CPU cooler put that back plate through those four holes that you have an opening for now. And then what you wanna do is there should be like little standoffs that you can screw into that back plate to prepare you for the pump. So once you've got the standoffs on the back plate and that's all in, you're now ready to get the two brackets for the CPU pump and attach those to either side. Does matter what orientation, so just make sure you're following the manual to making sure that you're putting it on the right way and the right orientation. And then from there, you can take the pump and put that onto CPU, making sure that you've put your CPU in and you've got thermal paste on it. If you don't have thermal paste, the pump does come with thermal paste pre-applied that you can use. Um, and I've done that in the past and it's been no problem. So once you have your pump and your back plate all aligned, um, you'll have four more screws that you can just go ahead and put on. I prefer to do it in diagonals so that we're putting even pressure and they can just be hand tightened. And then you wanna do the opposite corners again, have all four of those on, making sure nothing's moving. And then with the screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, uh, tightening them to make sure that you've got really good contact pressure between the CPU block and the CPU. Now for the fans and the radiator, this part is going to be different depending on your level of confidence. I would recommend putting the actual fans on outside of the case. As you'll see in this video though, I actually put my motherboard and the radiator into the case without the fans on yet, just because I wanted to see how everything was going to fit. But I would recommend actually putting your fans on normally on the outside of the radiator. If you've got three extra, put them on the inside and you can do push pull like what I've done and then put everything into the case in one big go. And then you've only got to really worry about screwing in the motherboard to make sure that's not going to move. And then you can screw in the radiator so that's all sort of in that fixed location. From there, it's just a matter of going ahead and plugging in those fans, either into the fan hub or into your motherboard's fan headers, as well as the CPU pump, making sure that that's going into the all-in-one cooler pump header on your motherboard. And then the RGB component comes into it if you have that. So if you're getting this cooler with RGB, there'll be an RGB controller, which you can then go ahead and use that controller to cycle through the colors or you can use the adapter to plug that into your motherboard and control it via software. So you've got a couple different options. Okay guys, so now that you've got your CPU cooler mounted to your motherboard, your fans are on the radiator, motherboard is in the case, everything's sort of secured, putting in your SSDs or your hard drives, then adding in your graphics card, and then finally adding in uh, your power supply. So once you've done pretty much all of that and it's all cable managed, then you should have something which looks a little bit like what I've got going on behind me here, which is a final PC build, ready to play games, make videos, stream, do whatever it is that you wanna do. So thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know if there's any questions in the comment section down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.